Hunter x Hunter episode 65. What does this mean? I don't know what it means, but it's bad news. It's bad news for everyone on the island. This guy pointed himself, Green Island Watchdog, Beach Defender. Oh, oh, he's... oh, wow. Well, if he's friends with the Jing. Ruler only. Damn, he's got that SS card. Wait, there's not even a rank. Wait, what was the description? Eliminate. Oh my god. All trespassers to a random location. God, the way this show opens up potential arcs, side arcs. Which one of us would not watch each individual arc of each member of the Phantom Troop on their separate solo journeys? That is the power of the character writing of Hunter x Hunter. This is good. This is good for the Phantom Troop. <laughs> they have like a wholesome, wholesome mission. They're getting sucked into the game. Creative outlet for their powers. Oh, he's got the high Q quirk. That is so cool. All right, not how I thought that was gonna go, but still cool. Well, he's here defending the island and that means he's just letting all, all the other stuff happen, I guess. Gotta pick your battles. Anything's fine as long as you come in through the proper channels. Oh, there he is. It's high Q, but also I'm getting Besaid Island Final Fantasy X vibes. He's a Blitzball player. Evil Fist X and X Rock Paper Scissors. My favorite game. Yeah, that was interesting. What was it, Evil Fist? Way ahead of his skis. Probably why I learned so fast. Let him cook. <laughs> Again, another direct one to one life parallel for Ned. What do you feel left out? Yeah, he's been keeping this in the bag. Oh, but he wants he wants praise. Someone praise him. Hey, there you go. Could a fish for attention and he got it. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, it's hard fought. That's why we love him. That's why we love Klua. That's why we're rooting for him. Biscuit just caught up on the, on the friendship arc. On the friendship in Hunter x Hunter. About what Biscuit just said about Gon. It's so immediately resonant. Maybe the most obvious aspect of it is it has to feel right to your gut. It has to be something that actually speaks to what you are, which will include where you've come from and also what you need. The things for which you already have a strategic advantage and aptitude, which as I've argued before is I think the, the case for there being a real life destiny. There's this long and perhaps ultimately unsolvable problem or debate between what is chosen and what is fixed. And I think ultimately destiny is something like what you choose given the fixed parameters. Like with the N system, we're not blank slates. We we, we were kind of born with a type in a certain sense, and there are adjacent things that we could do. There's some things we'll never be, you know, we'll never be able to reach the, the pinnacle of, like with things we're born with that, that really are what we are. And I'd argue that the things we have the greatest energy for are probably going to sync up pretty well with what we naturally are and what our gifts are. If it doesn't, it probably means the conceptualization of what that thing is, is not as pinpoint as it could be. It's probably going to be something like focusing on something because you think that's the best or only way to get the actual thing you want. Like I mentioned, people have the idea, I'm only going to be happy if I'm a basketball player. Well, it's probably not the basketball that's the thing, it's the societal acceptance, the esteem, the competitiveness, the feeling of striving and winning, of which there are like a gazillion ways to approach. There's another element of this which I've been thinking about recently and speaks kind of to, to Wing's insight and genius. Gon was asking for this, right? He was asking, please give me one. And Wing could have, Biscuit could have. I would have advised him to make it destroying building infrastructure, but I feel very significantly that even if someone were to have given Gon the exact thing he just came up with by himself, it would have stripped it of some of the meaning for Gon. For some reason, it has so much more power that it's like his, that he developed. This is a real challenge, I think, and also a gift. It's a challenge because really, some the idea that no one is going to come and save you from your life. Like it, it has to be you that saves you from your life, fundamentally. It's good because that's kind of the adventure and you wouldn't want someone to rob you of your adventure by handing it to you. This has been coming up for me recently because I've been talking with a friend who feels somewhat stuck and is looking for a big change. And so we've been talking a lot about moving abroad and starting over. And since I know a lot about 
that, I got really excited to like discuss it with him and I made this whole plan that I thought was just like immaculate and amazing. I picked the place, I figured out the income, I eliminated a lot of the moving pains, I laid out arguments against every possible excuse I anticipated about why it would be impossible. And it was a really gratifying experience for me and like I was saying before with Biscuit and Gordon Kalua, like. I just felt like I had to do it because it was a way I knew I could help and it's something I'm very excited about and something I happen to know a little bit more about than most people I would say. But there was this nagging feeling in the back of my mind the entire time. The way I was doing it was not going to be helpful because for it to be really meaningful it, it probably would have to be something he came up with out of the blue on his own that he wanted to do. Really it's my adventure, it's my impulse that I'm handing to him but it's not him and it sort of has to be for it to be meaningful in the way I want it to be for him. <laughs> What's the catch? I'm also skeptical going. Which I bet Biscuit's a, a terrifying drunk, but she's also a tank. Defeat or bribe. Defeat it is. I mean, I, I have not been keeping track. Do enemies drop loot? Must have a lot of Jenny by now. What just happened? Oh, defeat it is. Okay. Wait, 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 what, 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 what? Are those the, the doppelganger gremlin things that imitated Leorio? Gon's got friends in high places. Well, Kalu's just leaving for, for a while. I love how the hunter exam is so, so nothing at this point. He's just like, yeah, I'll be right back. Remember how difficult that was? But yeah, I mean, with all they've grown since then, it's gotta be a big nothing. At this point, he's like the, the Hisoka level. <laughs> Yeah, we didn't really get the, the backstory on how Kalua got to the games, got to the exam. Speaking of side arcs, you know, let's just do the Kalua Hunter exam. <laughs> That'd be fun. Man, I would love to do the Hunter exam again, as crazy as it is to say out loud. <laughs> Although I expect, I kind of have expected Kalua to pass the Hunter exam off screen because it's such a nothing now. I'd love to see it though. Need your help. Um, you better tell it quickly. You don't really have any leverage. You know, you're not going to be it was a lot to take in at that time. And what an emotional crash. He's asking for help. Yeah. Yeah, I bet Biscuit could just wreck them. <laughs> Knowing Biscuit's gonna be like, go on, this is your training. Yeah. I mean, well, they probably are the most reliable. I mean, imagine the absolute panic of walking around with a bomb timer on your shoulder. Yeah, the Kaijo's couldn't you do some kind of pact or something like that? Oh, now he's even less leverage. Now it just comes down to this guy's mercy. Oh, this looks safe and wholesome. He did tell them to prepare those. This thing looks really familiar too. So what's the deal? You remove the bombs but create a monster, possibly beyond defeat, beyond your skill level? Yeah. Shocker.
Didn't have to do it, but he did it. Really should have like, I don't know, figured out some kind of inter intermediary trade to guarantee your survival. <laughs> you don't say. Apparently <sighs> avoided death. That's what it is, yeah. He's created a monster. And he got this ability to himself. You're not going to like what you see. Undoubtedly. アジトへは近い時期に行く必要があるかもしれない。うん。スペルカードがいるわね。マサドラで怪物カード換金してスペルカード買う。はい。Going <laughs> recovery. Our quest continues. I'm going to go down a very dark road here on the topic of games and sets of games and winning. I think that one way to measure one's growth or like tier in life is along the lines of levels of awareness, specifically awareness about one's own self-control, agency, how transparent the, the game of life looks to you, not just in theory, but like an actual practical effect. Like you have connected your thoughts, hypotheses about life to things that actually do work, where through your methods, you're able to like look at a problem, figure out a solution, enact that solution, and actually get what you want. You can break this down in multiple ways. One is in a particular area, let's say it's your field and you're really good at that in your field. There's also a more zoomed out general one, which is just like life itself. And for me personally, this is sort of what I th I mean when I say intelligence. It's not like book smarts, it's not factual knowledge, it's real game knowledge. A phenomenon emerges, I think, when you get to a certain point, when you are starting to see things in a really clear way, or you're above average or way above average. I think most people aren't even aware of the game. There's sort of a big sleep that's happening. In many areas, people are kind of on autopilot, don't even recognize their own agency. On the spectrum of like, how much of a victim are you to your subconscious? People are, are sort of way down the scale where they're mostly victims to their subconscious. But in life, we're all living together. We're all competing in the same game, regardless of ability. And it can be really tempting, really gratifying, actually. Like it's a seductive feeling to start to think that you are like a wolf among sheep. You know, you can see things other people can't. And worse than that, it's their fault. You know, like you managed it, you got here. Why can't they? You can start to see it as willful blindness. They're choosing their lot. They could have had agency. They could have figured this out. All the information's there, but they didn't or they haven't yet. Whether or not that assumption is true is debatable, right? But that thought emerges. And then it's almost like you can feel it's your birthright. You know, it's your right to take from those that have not figured it out, that are weaker. And why shouldn't you? If one is born a wolf, you know, if one is born a predator, why is it wrong to predate on the weak? Or even more compelling, actually, if, if one has made themselves a predator through hard work and struggle and has fought for it and trained in it, why should they not reap the rewards of that ability. And so I understand how a lot of villainy can can come out of that. Like this guy who made the whole bomber thing, this is the game, you know, they've all been playing in the same game. It's not like the group that he just killed and stole from were purely virtuous themselves. They're looking for exploits. They are doing things that are a little bit questionable in the, the scope of the game. Isn't the only difference between him and them that he's better at the very thing they're trying to do. Obviously, I believe that the highest good is to be that capable, but then also to value the potential of other people to get there. And so it becomes your work to kind of safeguard them. Although that, I mean, that risks being a little bit presumptuous and arrogant. To have humility and not want to do damage and to see your goal as the highest good as something like moving the world up, not just taking selfishly. And I also think this way of thinking is not iterable, which is a good test of how good a value system is. The true heroes are the ones who are at that level of strength, but like safeguard it. As I put it in Full Metal Alchemist and recently in this show, who can both win the game and be good in doing so. That being said, the darkness is, I don't feel it's totally wrong. I feel like there's some tiny element of that that can be good and useful. I think there are times where people who really see things differently should be breaking the rules, should not be hemmed in by status quo, should be willing to do things that other people think are unthinkable, not apply themselves to the same standards as everyone else, should not take a pass on glory just because other people are incapable of glory, should not see their own strength as something evil or detestable simply because they have strength, though oftentimes people who are weaker will paint that strength in a negative light simply because they do not have strength. Have a little bit of that sharp edge about you where you know you're a predator, you know you can kill, but then also like keep it within reasonable boundaries and think about the the big picture aiming to contribute and grow rather than destroy it can be a push one example i'll give where i think this is obvious is i see a lot of people who are like really really special not enter into things that they could really do well in and contribute in because they haven't fostered that personal inner edge enough to think they're worthy of stepping into it often the smartest people the most equipped people have a, a great humility partly
partly because of their increased depth of awareness, where they understand the risks and challenges, and also how much they themselves don't know. Sometimes it's those people who most need that edge and push, you know, to get into the arena and like conquer things. <laughs> I mean, dude, don't rush, you're, you're four years old. I want it now. That's relatable. Chloe would know what to do. Oh yeah, it is them. <laughs> Sivan over and freeze the thing, Sam. I mean, fair enough. They too will catch up on the arcs before. Wait till they get to the York New City arc. Who's gonna be the unlucky bastard that <laughs> gets to be the test dummy? Oh, we got separation. Going with a gun is... 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 uh... Intimidating. Or will be. What was the Mayor Academia character that did Finger Bang? Was it Deku? Yeah, it's Deku. The return of Finger Bang. Bloop. <laughs> hey, you got it. Give me some Nen to train, Bisky. I need some Nen to train, Bisky. Yes, they are. That much is a constant in this show. Please, Hunter x Hunter Gods, let me watch Kalua take the exam and just destroy everyone. I need to see him be the, the Hisoka of the game. That'll be such a great reference point to to measure their his development and growth. I wonder what what, what could what could be the the Nen training for me. What would be the equivalent of like working on something every day? I gotta think about it. Why do they do this so often in these end credit scenes? Whoever made them was was shipping them. Another episode and another thousand point power gain for Gon. The only risk I guess for Kalua is that I don't know if the Hunter exam will increase his power. It's one of those things where the, the perfect difficulty range is where they usually operate. It's like one tiny step ahead of their current level. It's like a little bit of a stretch, but not too much of a stretch where they're overwhelmed and drowning. Though for Gon and Kalua, that's a pretty wide area. It's a pretty wide zone because they're very capable. For Kalua, the Hunter exam almost seems like it's below his current level. I mean, he, he already passed it or would have passed it if not for, you know, his brother's intervention. That was before he even knew what Nen was, so. Though I guess, like, there's ways you can use things that are below your difficulty level to maximize your difficulty level. You just give yourself an extra challenge within it. Speaking of games, it's like people who make custom runs for themselves where they do, like, one character starting equipment run, no level up runs, etc. Or, like, if you're working out in a place where you don't have high enough weights, you just do, like, an insane number of reps or compromise yourself in some other way. For Kalua, I guess it will also depend largely on who else is taking the exam.